Okay, so I'm back. I know the end of that cut out abruptly. The the uh, camera quit on me, so I uh, I um, instead of starting from the very beginning, I'm just going to pick up where I left off. So we took the uh, we took the support pole out of the inside. We collapsed everything down. We folded the um, mattress up properly, like so. So we're ready to put this thing away. So this is. The, the object here is, here is you don't want to get any of this canvas on the outside of this seal all the way around. So it has to be always tucked past it on the other side when you close it up. That's Doing it with one hand is very tricky. I don't have anybody to help me here, so I'll have to try it again. Hopefully I can get through this without uh, messing this up. If I could just get someone to hold this for a minute. Up, everybody scattered. So I guess I'm on my own. Okay, here we go. It's easy to do by yourself, but you need two hands. So here I go. I'm going to put it up. Okay. Now I'm going to set this down for a minute because you can see all the. I told you you have to have everything tucked in. The canvas is on the outside. So let me set it here. I'm going to go oh, to both sides this time so I don't accidentally lose the picture. So I'm tucking it in over here. Okay, so you can see I've got everything tucked in. That's got to be a little bit better right there. I can just get a hold of this. Tuck it in a little bit more right there. Then I'm going to take this here. I'm going to fold this around. There we go. The latch just latch it like that. Okay, that worked all right. So everything has got to be tucked in good. So I'm making sure this is in good. Okay, so here we go. Yikes. All right, I hope that wasn't too uh, bad for you. Okay, so the front works the same way. I don't know, the thing went out again. I don't know what's happening. We need a better camera, obviously. Okay. So the sink works like any other sink, right? The range, you're going to spark it to light it. So this is the sparker here. You turn it clockwise. So you turn on some gas. You're going to spark it. I don't know if I turned the tanks on, so I'll give this a second. If it doesn't light, we'll know that I didn't. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so we have gas there. So that's pretty straightforward. The oven itself. Let me see here. The oven itself has to be lit with a grill lighter. You can see under here. Let me see if I get a good picture of it. Right there, all the way to the back. There you go. You see there's a pilot light back there. You have to trust me. So you come up here to the oven knob. You're going to put it to pilot, like that. Then you're going to depress it and hold it. Then you'll light, take your grill lighter and you'll light the pilot light at the back there. When it lights, you still hold this in. You're still holding this in. And you'll continue to hold it for another 10 seconds or so. Then you go to your operating temperature, whichever that is. And um, it'll cycle through normally. But then when you shut it off, obviously the flame goes off, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time. Okay? This is your power converter. This device converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. So you can see you have uh, regular household type circuit breakers there for 110 AC. Some things in this trailer has to be 110, like the air conditioner or the microwave, for example. Um, other everything it can run on DC in here it does. So those are those are protected with these automotive fuses here, and you can see they're all labeled next to it. If any of these fuses were to blow, they'll light up. And you can see them through this tinted plastic. Um, so you have circuit breakers in there for the 110 AC, and you've got fuses for the DC side, 12 volt DC, okay? This is also a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery has. And if it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps up to it. If it's low, it'll send, uh, you know, uh, 10 amps or whatever it needs, all right? Okay, good. This couch is jackknifes flat. You just pull it down here. And the back will fall in place and it becomes a bed. 
This one here, you pull the poles out from underneath and store them, and then you just set the, the top here onto these cleats down here. So you got four of them. And that way it'll stay in place. And you use the back cushions to fill in the space, and you've got another bed there. So a lot of sleeping options here. Your TV, you still need a coax cable, I believe. I don't see one on there. Um, and uh, this is not a locking bracket, so it has to be strapped into place. Is ideally if you if you can get a piece of velcro strip or strap you could wrap it from here around the back and then just velcro it right there and it'll keep it in place all right um, your uh, radio is a Furion it, it plays DVDs and CDs you can see the slot up there it does AM and FM obviously you can stream off of this USB here you can also hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth so you can play your music from your phone or tablet um, so it does a lot of things for a, a trailer radio. You've got two zones here, one and two. Uh, one is inside the trailer, two is the outside of the trailer. And also there's a remote with it, so you get a remote also. You have uh, down here, this is where your um, antenna uh, cable would hook up to your TV. right? This is actually the signal booster for the digital antenna. You can see there's a little switch here. That turns it on. You always want it on when you're, you just leave it on, period. But it has to be on to get a good picture through the antenna, all right? Uh, then you have, uh, obviously, uh, some USB ports so you can charge your stuff. Uh, the air conditioner, you're just going to, we use the knobs. This is for temperature. This is, uh, you can run at two speeds on just the fan, which is the air conditioner running without the compressor. And then you go over to the cool side and the compressor kicks on. you got two speeds for that. All right, so this is your grill. It just hangs on your uh, back of the trailer on the rack. This is where the, the um, Quick Connect hooks up I told you about, okay? Your refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator. It does not have a compressor. So therefore you can run it on gas if you choose to. It runs on 110 AC and gas. There's just two buttons for it, on and off. That's on, obviously. Um, then you have got auto or gas. So you want auto. Auto means electric. Basically electricity takes parameters so it'll always search out for electricity first and if you can't find electricity it'll, it'll switch over to gas. So let's say you're at a campground and you get a power failure and you have it on automatic it'll automatically switch over to gas so you don't spoil your food. If you want to set it to just to run on gas you can do it that way. If this check light comes on it means it faulted meaning it didn't light. You know, maybe there's still some air in the in the line, so it didn't push it all out yet. So you just shut it off and turn it back on, and it'll definitely light the second time around. Okay, so that's normal there. The only other thing to know about this refrigerator is this is th this gizmo here is called a thermistor. That plastic thing you're looking at is just a clip that holds the thermistor. The thermistor is a cylinder on the end of that wire. All right, so all, all you're doing, if you look at the sticker there, it says cooler up, warmer down. So you're just basically going to have this up as high as you can get it, almost always. I mean, if it gets cold outside, you might have to back it off if it starts to frost up. But generally, you want it as high as it, you can stretch the wire. Okay? That's, that's that. Moving along. Every light has a button in the middle. Although I just have, I sort of have the thing off, so it's not, it's not on. But the button's in the middle. Now, this has to be winterized. Every trailer, I don't know if you know this or not, because I don't know your experience level. But all trailers have to be winterized. Uh, they put bypass valves on the back of the water heater. Uh, therefore, when you pump antifreeze in, you can bypass the water heater because you don't want to get antifreeze into the water heater because it'll leave a really foul taste. Um, and you won't be able to get rid of it. It smells bad too. So you always, before you put antifreeze in, you always bypass the water heater. It's something you're going to have to research a little bit. Um, if you, to find the water heater, you just, you just look at it outside. You come inside the trailer, and there'll be a cabinet door, a panel, something you can remove to access the back of it. The same with the water pump. So you just have to listen for the water pump when you turn it on, and then you'll find an access panel for it. Okay? That's important. All right, the sink works like any other sink. The shower works like any other shower. you got a skylight. And you have a GFCI here. So all the, all the um, uh, plugs, even the one on the outside, are wired through this GFCI. So if you're using a coffee pot outside and it pops, you're going to reset it right here. All right, so the toilet. Now... Even got a ceramic toilet in it. So this has just been um, water tested. 
So that's just residual water you're seeing here. Directly below here is the black tank, right? Um, so you can't use this toilet dry to start off with. So the the procedure is you'll hook, you pull up your campsite, you'll hook up your water, you'll hook up your power, you'll come in here, then you'll take your chemical. And um, whatever chemical you use, powders, liquid, pre-measured pre -measured packet, scoops, whatever you use, you read the, the directions, find out the doses, you'll put a dose right here. Then you'll step on the pedal, water's going to be rushing out, right? As it rushes out, um, it'll fill the tank a little bit. So you want chemical and you want to put about a gallon or two of water in there just to get started. The bottom line is you can't use it without chemical or dry. So for then you just use it normally. Let's say you're going to stay at the same campsite and uh, uh, your tanks are full, so you dump your tanks, uh, you dump your black tank, you come back in here and you would repeat the procedure then because the chemical has been washed out and there's no water in it. So you'd put some water in it with the chemical, put a gallon or two and you're all set. Now as it <coughs> Excuse me again. As it gets, uh, as it'll only fill up to here when it flushes, right? Um, so there, to to put as much water as you need to use it, you can see if I'm pushing the pedal and the trap isn't even open in the toilet, it still activates the water valve. So you do this and it'll fill up the toilet as full as you want to fill it with water before you use it. Uh, and uh, you just have to do that before you. Um, use the toilet each time you put as much water in it as you you want to use okay all right hopefully that makes sense to you i'm, I'm hot and getting getting slap happy here okay um you got a fan switch here and this is obviously a vent you want to run the fan when you run the shower because uh you want to pull the humidity out because these trailers are built real tight so they're energy efficient so uh you definitely want to you run the fan while you're uh, using the uh, shower. All right, and this is the control panel here. I mentioned to you that you can light the water heater on gas, right? So that's how you do it right there. Make always make sure there's water in the ta water tank before you light it up. Your uh, power awning is right here. I'll be able to extend it somewhat for you, just so you can see it. It's going out, just like that. You have lights on the side there. Okay, you just run the awning out until you can see the awning tube, and then you know it's all the way out. Okay, very simple. Uh, the water heater, like I said, you light it here. The water pump I told you about is right here. For You use this for winterizing the trailer, but most uh, commonly you use it when you don't have plumbing on the campsite. We explained that, the fresh water tank, okay? A light switch. Um, now these are the levels. So... Your battery's totally charged. Uh, your fresh water, it's still got water in the tank because we're water testing it, but it will show low normally. Black is low. As it fills, the black tank will fill, it'll, it'll graduate up in one third increments. They'll light up as, as it goes. Once you get past two thirds, you got to think about dumping it. And you have one gray tank on this one. They just use this panel with the other gray tanks in case, you know, because it fits different applications. So anytime you see a dummy plug in here, that's just something this trailer doesn't have, okay? All right. Also, there is a. Let me look here to find the thing. <coughs> right here. This is an LP gas. Let me show you where I'm at here. I'm at the front of the trailer, below the sofa that jackknifes into a bed. You see that's green. It should always be green. This is the carbon dioxide and LP gas detector. Um, it's always should be green. You can set it off here so you can hear it. We'll go through two self-tests, one for LP, one for carbon monoxide, coming up, and then back to green. So um, if that goes off, you want to go outside, shut off your gas, and figure out what's going on, okay? All right. I think we're making it now. Last but not least, your thermostat. It's just an analog thermostat, so you're just going to turn it on. It turns on the furnace. You go back. And click it to oh, let me show you again here. You go back and click it to shut it off. Now, if you can hear it, it's still running. As soon as you shut it off, the flame goes out, but it'll still cycle for a minute or two to purge itself. So that's normal. All right. Got a battery for your smoke detector in my pocket here. I'll put that in for you. That's your smoke detector. All right. I think we've pretty much covered it. I mentioned the the, the range hood and how it vents to the outside. There's the fan. And there's a light. Okay. We close this up. All right. I think we've covered it. 
Um, you're going to have more questions if you never owned one of these before, so you can always call us and talk to us. You can go to the manufacturer's video. You can go to, uh, you know, online there's a, you can get any document or P in PDF form or any videos you need. Um, the, in this packet here, there's going to be a, a, a manual for every appliance in the trailer, so you can always look at those. So, it's, uh, there's plenty of information. So, okay. Um, I'm going to, oh, let me show you one more thing here. These are the, the blinds. They come down. I just want to tell you. They occasionally, after you've been using the trailer, these will start to come down in transit. So where you come over here, and this is a tension string. The tighter this string is, the tighter the awning is. So if it's coming down, and you're out in Colorado somewhere, you don't have to get service or anything. You just pull the string through this little spool here and tie a knot about a half inch up so it tightens this up a bit. And uh, that's all you got to do to adjust it, okay? All right, so that's it. Um... So thanks for purchasing from National RV Detroit, and any questions you call us, and thank you very much.